Create your own Lush Life Crochet Blanket, super thick, super textured throw, using Barnett Blanket in the Chenille Yarn. I like to use the 12 millimeter crochet hook for this project and I'd also like to demonstrate how easy it is to create some fringe for the ends of the blanket. The blanket that I created used five balls of the vintage white barnet blanket. The first thing I want to demonstrate for this blanket pattern is single, double and triple crochet. So first thing I'm going to do is create a slip knot with my yarn. Once I've done that, I'm going to chain on a bunch of stitches. So this way I can demonstrate side by side the single, the double, and the triple crochet. Again, using all three single, double, and triple crochet, I want to show you the sequence to the pattern in order to create this blanket. It's super easy, it's just mimicking the same pattern. So once I've made the, my chain, first thing I want to do is show you the single crochet. A single starts with a single loop. When you have your single loop, all you're going to do is go into the loop right beside it. You're going to then use your working yarn and you're going to grab your hook, pull it through one loop, leaving you two. Then you're going to grab that working yarn and pull through both. And that is the single crochet. Easiest way to remember is you always start with one loop. Go into one stitch, grab your working yarn, then pull your working yarn through both loops. It is really important to make sure that you're comfortable with all three of these crochet styles, single, double, and triple crochet. And this is a fantastic way just to practice if it's been a while since you've actually crocheted. It's endless with the different patterns out there when it comes to crocheting. So I'm just going to finish this last demo of the single crochet and then I want to show you the double. A double means you start with two loops, go into your next stitch, grab the working yarn, pull through two, pull through two. This is the simple version of the double crochet. So you start with a loop, then you're going to wrap your working yarn around so you have two, go into your next stitch, grab another, pull through two with the working yarn, pull through two. That's the double crochet. Again, it's just really good practice. Again, if it's been a while since you've crocheted, we've already done the first set of singles. Now we're doing doubles. So again, double crochet. Start with two loops, put your hook through your stitch. You'll have three loops. We're going to grab the working yarn, pull through two, and then we're going to pull through two again. Pretty easy. It's just practice, lots and lots of practice. For the entire pattern of the blanket, it's just really important to be comfortable with all three crochet styles, single, double, and triple crochet. So again, the double starts with two, pull through your stitch, grab your working yarn with your hook, pull through two, and then pull through two again, double crochet. And then lastly, I want to show you how to make the triple crochet. But you can see the considerable size difference because of the length of the crochet. So with a single it's short, a double gets long, and a triple it's going to get longer. So you're going to start with a loop, then you're going to take the working yarn and wrap two more loops around your crochet hook. So you'll have three loops. Then you're going to take the hook, go into your next stitch, pull the working yarn through, so you actually have four loops on your crochet hook. Take the working yarn, pull through two loops. Do it again, just pull through two loops, and then two loops again, and that creates your triple crochet. Again, just a little bit longer than the double. So you'll start with one loop, wrap the working yarn twice, then you're gonna go into your next stitch, 
pull the hook through, turn, grab the working yarn. Now you'll have four loops. Grab the working yarn, pull through two only. Then you'll have three, pull the working yarn through two, and two again, and this creates the triple crochet. Again, for this blanket, we're gonna be using all three of these crochet styles, the single, double, and triple crochet. So again, it's just really good if you haven't crocheted in a while and you can't remember exactly how each of these work, it's just really good to chain up and just do some practicing. Or if you're new to it, it's just to study and make sure that you're comfortable with all three of these crochet styles. Even if I hadn't crocheted in a few months, sometimes it's nice just to have a little refresher. So I love to just make quick little samples. And I also like to sample the pattern in which I'm going to do for a larger project. So this way I can kind of make some mistakes, know where it's easy to go wrong. And then when I go to tackle the larger project, I'm feeling a lot more confident. This type of chenille yarn is very bulky, so this, these kind of projects will stitch up very, very quickly. But you can see the noticeable difference between the single, the triple, and the double crochet. So next to show is the pattern. This pattern to me is actually very easy. If you know the single, double, and triple crochet, this pattern is so easy to follow. It, the most important thing is with this particular type of pattern is you're always gonna start with an even number, two, four, six, eight, ten. anything that's even. You don't wanna be in an off number. So I recommend even if you're gonna do a sample is to start with an even number on your chain. So for instance, I'm going to do a sample so you can see from end to end on the camera. So first thing I'm going to do is create 14 stitches. Then I'm going to chain three more and I'm going to go back fourth stitch in. And what I'm doing is actually doing two double crochets at once. And that's going to make sense in once we get into the next few rows. So with my sample chain that I'm demonstrating here is I'm going to go right across my chain only doing double crochets. Your project size will always depend on your chain. So if your chain you could do 80, 82 if you want to do a nice large throw like I did or if you wanted to do a pillow you would kind of measure the pillow size and then create the chain that would kind of follow suit so maybe somewhere around 24 to 34 in your chain the important thing with this pattern is making sure that you have an even number so i've now created 14 double crochets across my chain and you can see how bulky it is, so you can see how quickly this does really stitch up. It only takes, for the blanket that I made, I think it took me just under two days. So for this entire pattern, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna actually be going from right to left after every single row and only doing one row of single crochets. And this is just gonna kind of help build the architecture and it's also going to create a little bit of a stabilization for this pattern. When you get to the end, anybody who crochets, it's so easy to miss this end one and you want to make sure that you're picking that up as you're going across with your rows is picking up that end one. If we miss it, it sometimes causes the sides to be a little bit irregular. So I just kind of wanted to quickly show that it's a, when you get to the end, sometimes it's a little bit on the side. So once I've done my whole row of double crochets, then I've gone back and done a single crochet across. I'm actually going to chain up three, and that's part of my first double crochet. And this is where I'm going to show you the pattern of double crochet and triple crochet. Now there's a sequence we're going to be doing. We're going to be stitching into the post of the double crochet and we're also going to be doing every other one stitch into the single crochet at the top and this is what helps evolve the pattern. 
When we chain up like that, that's actually going to be the first stitch. So as I'm just trying to point out to you, we're going to be using the posts and we're going to be using every other single crochet at the top. First thing I'm going to do is a triple crochet into the double crochet post. So I'm going to go and stitch that triple crochet. And now I've started, I have a double crochet at the end. Now I have a triple crochet. And the triple crochet is actually going to sit quite bulky. And it's going to cover up that single crochet top. So this is where I want to skip it because the triple crochet covers it. Go into the next single crochet at the very top. And now I'm going to do a double crochet. And I keep switching it back and forth. So I started with a double from my chain, did a triple, did a double, and now I'm going to do a triple again. And again, I'm going to bring the triple down onto the first row of double crochets. And this is what's really creating that really thick texture as we continue on with the pattern. So I'm going to finish the triple crochet and now I'm going to do a double. So the triple again covers those singles. So this is where we skip the single because the one treble crochet covers it. So we go into that next one and now I'm just going to create a double crochet. So it's triple, double, triple, double. And that's all I'm doing. The trick to this pattern though is every time we do a double crochet across we're doing it into that single crochet and it's every other one. So many people will learn differently when they're doing a project. Sometimes it's the visual of what they're seeing and sometimes it's what they're hearing and some people are really good at just reading the pattern on a piece of paper. So it sometimes gets a little bit tricky. I'm a visual person. I can actually just watch what's going on and I can pick it up. But sometimes it does help with vocal instruction because it kind of, it guides you as you're watching what's going on. So again, all I'm doing here is I'm switching from a triple crochet to double, triple crochet to double. But again, the only thing that I'm trying to make sure that you can get right up close and see here is that the triple crochet is actually covering that single top. And when I'm on that single top, I want to do a double crochet in the single. So it's just kind of kind of going into a zigzag if that hopefully makes sense to you. Because I'm wanting to go up and down, up and down, and because I'm going to cross it, keep crossing it over as we get into a few more um, rows, this is what's creating the really plush thickness to this whole pattern. Now the end is can be different, and I know there's different styles of crocheters out there. Some will just use the bar to do their triple crochet, some will actually go right into the post itself. I just literally go around it. So now I'm flipping my work over and I'm now going to go and do that row of single crochets. And again, this is kind of the, it's, it's the architecture. It's what helps keep the balance throughout the entire pattern. So we always have something to double crochet into because our triples are actually going into posts. And now I've only created two rows in my sample and you can kind of already see the pattern taking place. So I'm going to go into a third row of double and triple crochets. And as you can see, this is where it's really important to make sure you've got that row in between of the single crochets. So I'm starting this row going the opposite of the row below me meaning my first row sample I did a triple so going into this row I'm going to do a double so I'm trying to reverse what I did with the row below so where I saw a double I'm going to do a triple and vice versa so just kind of following along as we go I'm now going into a what was a triple I'm making a double now then I'm going to make a triple what was a double below. 
So you can kind of see from the row below where you need to be going on the row above. And again, because this is a very textured pattern, you can see your triple crochets are gonna sit much higher, and then the double crochets are gonna sit a little bit more recessed in. Now the other thing is, is always identifying when you're going into that second single crochet to create that double crochet. So I'm wanting to make sure I'm giving you enough visuals to follow that pattern portion. So you can see that I have a triple crochet I just finished. It's covering up that single crochet. I'm skipping over to do the double. Now I'm going back to doing a triple crochet into the post below, which was a double crochet. I'm doing a triple now on top of it. Then that triple is covering the single and I'm gonna go into the next single to do a double crochet on top of what was a triple crochet below. So it's just, again, making that zigzag back and forth. I kind of identify this as a back and forth with triple double. So I have a double, so I'm putting a triple crochet on top of it. That triple crochet is now kind of overlapping that row of single crochets. So I've got to make sure I'm skipping to every other single crochet to add on my double. Now I'm going to be doing a triple crochet. And again, the triple crochets are always going into the post below, which is a double. And now I'm going to try and get that last one in with a double crochet. And here we go. You can start to really see it takes place. Now this is a short sample, so you can see everything on camera, but once your project starts to take on more rows, it will take on more weight. When it takes on the more weight, it'll start to balance and straighten out. Because this type of yarn is so bulky and you're just doing a small little swatch sample, it's very light, but it will carry on and get a little bit heavier, which will then pull the stitches and create a, a straighter look. And the most important is making sure you're always going from right to left. You're going, you're doing this from the back side of your project, is going from right to left, making that single row of single crochets. So one row of single crochets. And I did a double to start below, then it goes into a triple. Again, you're just going in reverse to that pattern below. So if you started that row below you with a double, your next one's gonna be a triple above it. But as you can see, it's just a pattern that just carries through with double, triple, and single crochet. If you wanna try this pattern, I do really recommend just to try a little sample size. So this way you can kind of get the root of the pattern. So it's starting with the chain, a whole row of the double crochets, make sure you have an even number, and then practicing. And as you can see, the back side and the front side look a little bit different, but it's very thick, it's very textured, and it's quite beautiful. For me to create the blanket, it took me five balls of the Barnett Vintage White Chenille Bulky Yarn. So I wanted to show you that I was working with the actual blanket, but it's, it's so hard to see because it's so much thicker and I felt that the swatch size, that small little 14, 14 chain stitch was perfect for the camera so you could kind of see from the very beginning to the very end of a row whereas with the blanket it's just me my hands and all you're seeing is these stitches everywhere but it does stitch up so quickly and it took me i think around two days to make the whole blanket so these make for perfect gifts and especially with Christmas season rapidly approaching us. This is a fantastic way to hand out gifts for everybody loves 
throw blankets and especially these plush really warm really thick and this type of yarn is easy to wash and can go in the dryer So I'm working on the row of just single crochets right across, but as you can see, this is the back side of the actual throw blanket. And you can see where I actually skip my stitch with that single crochet. So it actually has a, a kind of a neat pattern on the back in itself, and it looks quite different from the front of the blanket but it's just again just really important to make sure you're coming back from right to left as you continue up with your rows and make sure that you're doing that single row of single crochets so because this type of stitch pattern is so thick and as you create more bulk on your project, you can see that gravity starts to take effect and all your stitches kind of straighten out a little bit and pull but as we continue on you can just see how thick and plush it is it's really really gorgeous this type of pattern is not limited to blankets you could make scarves out of this throw pillows it's actually really plush and with a barnet you can have so many different colors to choose from we've been having an incredibly good time with our newest little member pascal He's been loads of fun and we've been doing lots of training with him and he is growing so fast. I wanted to quickly demonstrate how I did the fringe for both ends of the blanket. And I'm using this boucle yarn, which is also by the same brand, Barnett. And I'm just gonna be using the very end stitches, but you could actually go into the posts if you're more comfortable. I cut off as many pieces as I need to cover the entire bottom. So that's usually for the amount of stitches that you started with, because that will cover the bottom and the top of the blanket. And then I just go around and I pull through. And I like the knot part to be present instead of behind on the back side of the blanket so this is just how i do it it's really easy it goes on really really quickly and i think it gives a really beautiful effect to any throw blanket Thanks so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, take care.